it's hard to make choices. So when we use tapping to reduce the overwhelm that we're feeling, when you, what you're doing when you're tapping on those points is biologically, physiologically, it is acting on your brain stem and the amygdala in that Mm. fight, flight, or freeze response. And it is calming down that fight, flight, or freeze response. Mm. When we do that, we are able to actually access that frontal cortex, creative and critical thinking part of our brain. Okay. So we come up with answers that wouldn't normally occur to us when we're in a highly stressed or anxious state. Hey, 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 Entre Leaders. Happy Wednesday and welcome to another episode of the Leaders Lab podcast. If you are new here, I am your host, Dr. Charity C. Campbell, better known as Dr. C. And I am a doctor of management. I am an academic professional, a world-class millennial global leader, and a multi-passionate entrepreneur. Here in the Leaders Lab, we talk all things entre leadership, communication, and balance as a millennial professional. And in today's episode, our special guest is sharing a concept with us that many of you may or may not be familiar with. If you're feeling anxious, stressed, or have had traumatic experiences, you may be wondering if there's anything that you can do to feel better. Well, you are not alone. Millions of people suffer from anxiety and PTSD every year, but there is hope. EFT or emotional freedom techniques is a relatively new healing modality that has been shown to be incredibly effective uh, in working through fears, anxiety, and even traumatic experiences. So our special guest today is going to be sharing insights on how to use EFT tapping to calm your anxiety before something like a podcast interview um, or using EFT tapping to harness the power of your voice. And maybe using EFT tapping to stop procrastinating. Stop procrastinating about things that you want to do, such as like launch a business, launch your podcast, um, start that new artwork project. So go ahead, grab your coffee, your tea, whatever it is you're going to be drinking for right now. And also grab something to take notes with because you are not going to want to forget Uh, what we're going to be talking about today. So let me introduce you to our special guest today. Her name is Sarah Whiteside. She is a certified EFT practitioner and mentor specializing in working with um, online entrepreneurs who are stuck in a loop of personal development, um, imposter syndrome, and perfectionism. Yes, we have another guest who's going to be talking to us about perfectionism here. Sarah's Arise Coaching Framework and um, EFT skill set helps you to eliminate procrastination and step into your confident action in your business. She helps to identify uh, procrastinate habits, I love it, uh, repeating life patterns and limiting beliefs, and she works to rewire these systems with EFT tapping so that you can make maximum impact in your business. Sarah lives in Virginia, so she's East Coast. I, you know, I'm originally from North Carolina, so she lives in Virginia with her her chef husband and two sons and spends her free time reading, working out, and taking tap dance classes. So (laughs) Entre Leaders, without further ado, please help me welcome to the lab, Sarah Whiteside. Welcome to the Leaders Lab, love. Thank you so much, Dr. C. It is such a pleasure to be here with you and your entre leaders today. I appreciate it. And first of all, let me just say that you are your, I feel like your episode um, with us here in the lab is completely unique, unlike any other. First of all, because of what you're talking about. Um, We have never had someone to talk about EFT before, you know, and uh, honestly, entre leaders, I'm going to tell you the truth. I had to double check with her before the the show just to make sure I understood what EFT means. But for those of you who are, you're just like, what is an EFT? Sarah, can you tell us a little bit about it? 
I am so excited to bring EFT tapping to brand new audiences who have never heard of it before. I had okay. never heard of it before about five years ago. EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques, and it is a collection of techniques developed in the late 90s to mm -hmm. that utilize the energy meridians of the body. So we take the principles of Eastern medicine and acupuncture, and we use that to help free up the emotions that we have trapped in our bodies. We operate so often out of our head space. 90% mm -hmm. of our time is spent in our head and 90% of our existence is below the neck. So wow. by tapping into these energy meridians on the head, the face, the upper part of the body and vocalizing different, there are different vocal cues you can use while you're tapping. So we connect the head through the voice to the rest of the body and what the rest of your body is experiencing. So it's a beautiful way to ground yourself in the present moment and also to work through so many different emotions and experiences that we go through. When you say tapping, can you show us, and I'm so, I apologize for those of you who are listening to the audio version, but don't worry, you can ch uh, check out the link in the show notes to actually click on it and then watch the video version of this because I want her to show us if, if it's something that you can show, like what does the tapping look like? Absolutely. So there are traditional tapping points that we use. And when you hear the phrase tapping, there are different varieties of tapping um, okay. in different. So, but the tapping that EFT uses, typically we use a point on the side of the hand. So you can tap with either hand. It doesn't matter which one you start with. So we tap on the side of the hand. And this is where we do something called the setup statement. And we repeat a setup statement three times. And then we move to a tapping point at the very top of the head. So right, yep, right at the crown, right in the center. Okay. Then we move okay. to the above inside point of the eyebrows. So you can do one hand or both. Okay. Almost, you're almost right between your eyebrows. Then we move to the outside part of the eye. Oh, yep. okay. Yeah, and you can just tap right around your glasses if you're wearing glasses, no need to remove them. Then okay. we move to the bone right underneath the eye. Okay. Yep. Then underneath the nose, then underneath the lower lip, which most of the time gets cued as the chin point, but don't tap on the tip of your chin. You want to tap right underneath the lower lip. Okay, like right there. Yep, absolutely. And then we move to find those, bend your elbows, find those collarbones, and then move oh, yeah. just an inch below them. So you're just going to go just underneath the collarbones. Oh, wow. And then the last point that we typically use is underneath the arms. So I'm a little bit, I need to tilt I'm my ticklish. camera down. Yeah, <laughs> in that absolutely, in that tickle spot. So, right, oh, okay. you know, kind of at the bra line for ladies, right? Underneath. Okay underneath the arm on the side of the rib cage. So those are okay. the typical tapping points that we use during EFT tapping. Now there are some other ways, there are some additional points you could use. There are fingertip tapping points that you can use discreetly when you're in, you know, stressful situations, or maybe you're in a meeting and you can actually tap on your fingertips, like underneath the table. Yep. And so wow. you're going to go, yeah, like you were going to go to shake somebody's hand and then you tap at the tip of the, the top part of the nail bed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So this, that one comes in pretty, oh, covered up my face. That one comes in pretty helpful when you maybe are um, somewhere where you need to take down the intensity of anger, sadness, anxiety, Ooh. fear, Ooh. any of those emotions. And you just tap wow. through those points. I like to do tapping in the car. It's a great okay. place. It's one of those places where People tend to slow down. They start to have a chance to think about what their day has been like or what they yeah. have coming up. And a yeah. lot of those thoughts makes make us nervous or anxious. And so many yeah. times I will be driving down the road and I just tap away <laughs> as I'm <laughs> driving down the road. How hard are you supposed to tap? Is it supposed to be like a gentle tap or do you like, you know, you... Yeah, I would say it varies because there have been times where I've been very angry and the tapping ends up being a little bit more aggressive, <laughs> but okay. it is really just enough to stimulate those acupressure points. So, you know, I think oh. you kind of feel 
like that resonance almost like you almost feel the reverberation of your the pressure of your fingertips through the skin and you know so you want to give it decent pressure but not enough to bruise yourself up right yeah so so how how did this come about like i know you said uh it, it was something that was developed in the late 90s but how did this come about like how did you know did someone just one day say yeah. Um, instead of doing acupuncture or instead of, you know, doing, uh, meditation or, you know, all those things, let's tap. Yeah. EFT was developed out of something called thought field therapy. So, which was an offshoot of talk therapy and they had these big scripts that they would use. And, and initially the, how it was developed was around fear of water um, is kind of the Ooh. first episode where somebody used these tapping points and had the had the script. And so thought field therapy was then, they found that within these scripts and within these tapping points that they were using, that there were certain things that really helped and that they could take those certain aspects, the different points that they were tapping on and the different parts of what they were saying and combine that into a standard, it's what we call the basic EFT recipe, okay. combine that into kind of a standard recipe of how to do tapping. And it worked on experiences varying from post-traumatic stress disorder to mm -hmm. cravings and weight loss. And that wow. is what is, I think, almost makes it unbelievable to a lot of people is that something that could work for PTSD and it has in fact been validated by the VA as a modality for therapists to use with veterans. Wow. To saying, using it for helping to stop bad craving habits that you're having or help with weight loss. And that research is really based out of Australia with Dr. Peta Stapleton. She's okay. an amazing researcher. The body of evidence that is supporting EFT tapping just keeps growing. And that is something mm -hmm. that drew me to it as an energy modality, because my background is as an allied health professional, as a certified athletic trainer. So wow. research is important to me in my professional yeah. background. So yeah. as I experienced EFT and learned how it was being scientifically validated, that felt really important to me in my decision to move forward and becoming an accredited certified practitioner. Okay. So now I, when, you know, you know, as soon as you said weight loss, you knew I was going to ask about that question, right? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. okay, we have mm -hmm. to dig into that. So I, yeah. I want to, I want to talk about that personal aspect first. And then of course we can, because this is the leaders lab, so we can jump into the business aspect of it. But firstly, how could I use EFT tapping to stop cravings? Like would the craving stop or would it just make me focus on something else? It actually stops the craving. So I'm going to ask you, what is a food or beverage that you crave on a regular basis? Everything. Everything. <laughs> Give me one thing. Like just pick one thing out of the batch of everything. Ice cream. Okay. What is it that you love so much about ice cream? Ice cream. I, no, since I was a child, I'm not trying to be funny, but since I was a child, I have been like obsessed with ice cream. I totally love ice cream. Honestly, when I sit and I eat ice cream, I just, I, I'm just, I'm happy. Like mm -hmm. I'm really happy. Like I'm just, you know, and I, I don't know if it's because of the different flavors that I'm experiencing or I don't feel, I don't know if it takes me back to like, as a kid, like I've just always loved ice cream, um, ice cream and chocolate. Actually, yeah. I love those two together. But one of the things that I love about ice cream is I think I like the I, I like how smooth it is, mm -hmm. you know, like I think I think that's the thing. And and the taste it's the taste overall. So, yeah, ice cream. We'll stick okay. with ice cream and chocolate. Yeah. All right. So I'll go into a little bit of the background on why this works, too, and how EFT works in general is that when we have those memories like eating ice cream as a young child and the yeah. happiness, the happiness that that is associated with, it yeah. gives us that hit of dopamine or those, those happy chemicals that are released by our brain when we have a positive memory association. Mm -hmm. So your brain is craving that hit and 
unfortunately, it does, it can lead us down this road where we are ingesting more than we want to or should be, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. what we do to kind of temper that reaction that is going on at a very unconscious brain level by using the EFT tapping. So we're going to start on the side of the hand. And I don't know, if, I guess this will work okay if you just repeat after me. Okay. Even though I love ice cream so much. Even though I love ice cream so much. I love the smoothness and the taste of it. I love the smoothness and the taste of it. It just makes me so happy. It just makes me so happy. I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I crave the taste of ice cream. Even though I crave the taste of ice cream. It makes me so happy. It makes me so happy. I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. One more time. Even though I really crave the smooth taste of ice cream. Even though I really crave the smooth taste of ice cream. It makes me happy. It makes me happy. I deeply and completely accept myself. I deeply and completely accept myself. Top of the head. I crave ice cream. I crave ice cream. Top of the eyes. I love the smooth feel of it. I love the smooth feel of it. Side of the eyes. I love the taste of ice cream. I love the taste of ice cream. Under the eyes. Ice cream makes me so happy. Ice cream makes me so happy. Under the nose. I just love ice cream so much. I just love ice cream so much. Chin. I love that smooth taste. I love that smooth taste. Collarbones. I crave ice cream. I crave ice cream. Under the arm. Ice cream makes me so happy. Ice cream makes me so happy. Okay. Now, one thing I left out before we started tapping, I should have asked you to rate your intensity in how much talking about that ice cream was making you really crave ice cream. So if you gave me a rating on a scale of zero to 10 before we started tapping, where would you guess it was at? Probably because here in China right now, it's like, it's really late. So it's like midnight. I would probably say that craving may have been at like a three or four on a scale of one to 10. It was like a three yeah. or four. Okay. But if you would have asked me earlier today, it was mm -hmm. at like a 25. <laughs> and then after we did that round of tapping, now when you really tune into that smooth taste of ice cream, how intense does that feel to you right now? Zero to 10. Honestly, and I don't know if it works like this, but because I'm a newbie, I was just, I was tired of tapping. So I did. So as a, for me, since I was tired of tapping, I was like, I don't want ice cream anymore. Like, yes, that's exactly how it works. Okay. So that is, really? what we call, yes, that's what we call a cognitive shift in EFT tapping. And at some point you get, you get to this point and you're like, why am I even tapping on this? I don't want ice cream anymore. It is so insane. They're starting to do these brain scans. Um, where yeah. They're doing fu functional MRIs where they will show, they're doing studies where they will show people um, pictures of foods that give people cravings and they'll do the yeah. functional MRI and they'll flash those photos and see where all the parts of the brain are that light up during that functional yeah. MRI. Then they do their EFT training on how to do tapping for cravings and bring them back in, I don't know if it's six or eight sessions or six or eight weeks and put them back through the functional MRI and can see such a marked difference in the reduction in the number, the area of the brain that is actually lit up when they show those same pictures over again. I have to tell you a story about cravings. I love white and pink jelly beans. Well, I don't love them so much anymore because I had a client that I worked with and she was like, I don't, I just love the pink jelly beans. And we did a session on pink jelly beans. And guess what? I'm actually a little bit disappointed that I don't love pink jelly beans so much anymore. <laughs> Cause I mean, you were like tapping. I was like, you know what? Ice cream is not worth all this tapping right now. Like, I mean, that was just my whole mindset. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I, I, I felt a little embarrassed to say it to you because like I said, I'm a newbie. Like I've never heard of this prior to today, prior to this episode. Yeah. 
And so I was like, I don't want Sarah to think that I'm disrespectful. You know, I don't, but I am tired of tapping. I don't even want ice cream anymore. So when you were like, yeah, that's the point. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh my goodness. So yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah, I'm glad I didn't choose chocolate because I would be mad. I would, <laughs> I would have listened. If we would have, if I would have tapped on chocolate around here, I would have been like, you know what, Sarah, I'm, I, I don't want to keep going. <laughs> I'm just going to stop right here, right at it's, this point, because I want to keep going with the chocolate. It's funny to have people um, come into a cravings demo and have them actually bring what they're craving. And really within about three rounds of tapping, you can go from like an eight to a 10 on the cravings down to like nothing. Like, why do I even have this in front of me? And sometimes it's not, I actually did a session one time on, I love a good vodka tonic with, with lime. And uh -huh. it was a morning session. And I was like, well, it's morning. I'm not craving a vodka tonic with lime right now. But when I yeah. opened that bottle, it triggered another a different level response. So wow. when you're doing these craving tappings, a lot of times having the object there with you to smell to really get your senses fully involved in it helps yeah. get to a different level of it so you might still look at that ice cream later and go yeah i could probably still take a bite or two but there are oftentimes with food cravings it's not just about the food we know that it's about yeah. the emotion that's underlying and so whether you are eating that food or drinking that drink to forget about an emotion or to mm -hmm. tap into the happiness of an emotion that you had associated with that food previously. It, mm -hmm. it does the same thing. It brings down the intensity of that emotion that you're trying to stay away from or that you're trying to, to gravitate towards so yeah. that we're not using that food as a way to get away or get towards a goal, you know? Yeah. Okay. So now that we dealt with the personal side, mm -hmm. now let's, let's bring it on to the, to the business, to the leadership side. How I have two, I guess, two of these questions. How can a business owner or an entre leader, an entrepreneur mm -hmm. use EFT to um, help with launching their you know, their email sequence or their email list? Because that's the thing that I am struggling with. Honey, I can write that first email, but mm -hmm. if it, once we get down to like three, four, five, going all the way and like keeping, keep, I'm just like, look, I'm still trying to get these blog posts out. Like I'm still trying to record podcast episodes. I'm sure trying to mm -hmm. do all these things. How could a business owner use EFT to help them, you know, with their email list? It's funny that you said that because that is one of the things that I used EFT for myself was in getting my email list started and even just getting through the overwhelm of choosing an email service provider. I can't yes. tell you how many months I agonized and compared ConvertKit <laughs> to MailerLite to Active Campaign and all of the choices. All and I actually worked with a practitioner when I was going through my certification and we focused on this. And what I emotionally was tying my email list to, or my potential email list to, was I am going to put in all of this work and I don't know what kind of response I'm going to get. Yes. I was afraid that I was not going to get, put all this effort in and it wouldn't come back. And yes. Yes. And a lot of times we associate that even unconsciously with something that we have experienced in the past. And as we were mm. in the tapping session and she said, is there a time in your life where this feeling is familiar to you, that you remember feeling this way and the tears all came out and I was like, oh my God, this is how I have always felt in my job as an athletic trainer and I put forth so much effort and I'm wow. there those long hours and I go above and beyond to do what yeah. is best for the athlete or for the team and there's no thanks. And I wow. was so devastated that, yes. but it was so beautiful at the same time to have that clarity of, 
oh my God, I'm afraid of feeling this way that I don't want to feel again. But I'll tell you, after I did those sessions and finally got the tech side of it taken care of with a wonderful course, when I started my email list, I email my list twice a week now, and I've done that for almost an entire year now. And it feels good. I love emailing my list. Two times a week for a whole twice year? A week. Yes. And I know that it's a little bit above and beyond for most people, but that's how I get most of my content out currently. I don't have my own podcast. I don't publish regularly on my blog. So that's my main output. So I can put a lot of time and effort into it. And truthfully, it's not even that much time, but it is something that feels good to me. And I think that using tapping to help identify what feels like a good and true method for you to use as a business owner is a fabulous Mm -hmm. way to use it. Because if, you know, people are telling you to go make the comments in the Facebook groups and offer yourself up in Facebook groups all the time. And that feels gross and yucky. And yeah, we can do some tapping on that. And for people whose goal that is to go in and make comments, like I've been able to do that with a client to take her from, I don't even want to go into Facebook groups into, she was doing it on a regular basis for, you know, 30 minutes a day. And she was like, yeah, it's not a big deal now. But if it's truly not a goal of yours, it can also help clarify why you don't want to do it. It can help lead you to making a decision of, okay, well, if I don't want to do this, what do I want to do? What does feel good to me? What does feel true to me and how I want to operate my business? And there are so many different modalities out there, but we have to make choices. We can't do them all. That is just the plain honest, simple truth is you cannot do it all. And it's hard to make choices. So when we use tapping to reduce the overwhelm that we're feeling, when you, what you're doing, when you're tapping on those points is biologically, physiologically, it is acting on your brainstem and the amygdala in that Mm. fight, flight, or freeze response. And it is calming down that fight, flight, or freeze response. Mm. When we do that, we are able to actually access that frontal cortex, creative and critical thinking part of our brain. Okay. So we come up with answers that wouldn't normally occur to us when we're in a highly stressed or anxious state. Would it be possible to use EFT to raise prices with confidence? Been there, done that. Absolutely. And really? this is this is something that I get clients coming to me um, on a regular basis with of, I want to raise my prices. And what is the bottom line behind feeling able to raise your prices? It's something that has to deal with your self-worth, how much you yeah. value yourself and your services wow. and your confidence yeah. behind that. So we dig into some of those things that come from deep in our past sometimes of, Mm -hmm. I don't feel worthy because of X, Y, or Z. And that is still following me now. You know, that may have happened when I was in my twenties and now I'm 42, but it still is, it's still here and it's still kind of haunting me. And we can dig into those experiences from earlier in life and do tapping to reduce the intensity of the emotion that is still attached to those memories. And sometimes Mm. it takes doing a little bit of work to actually get to, you know, what is underneath all of this, but that's the, it's the same thing with procrastination. We procrastinate because it's new. It's different. Our body is going into fight, flight, or freeze. (sighs) And I was in that, I was in that free state. I left my full-time job. I swear to God, I probably spent three years in free state. It was scary. And it took being able to dig out the emotions out of that backpack that I had been carrying around for my whole life, stuffing Mm -hmm. the emotions in, don't want to deal with them, try to ignore them, feel guilty, all the things in the backpack, trudging around through life. And as I finally started to face some of that stuff and pull it out of the bag and deal with the 
things that were going on in my marriage or the relationship between me and my parents or other situations. And as I faced those things and really came to understand how that they were affecting me now, Mm -hmm. you, you learn this beautiful way of saying it's okay to have all of these emotions and to feel them because we are human and that's what makes us human. We have positive emotions and negative emotions and I don't even like to call them that. But you know, you can't have light without the dark. You can't have joy yes. without the sadness. Yeah. And and that's why we have the acceptance statement when we do it on the side of the hand. I deeply and completely accept myself. Yeah. It's that, that you're accepting yourself no matter where you're at and that you can then process that emotion and learn from it. And then you can actually take steps to move forward. Okay. So how is EFT tapping different from other mindset techniques like affirmations or meditation or even, um, you know, visualization? I love this question because (laughs) when I found EFT tapping, I was terrible or hated doing all of those things that you just mentioned. (laughs) So if you're somebody who considers themselves a bad meditator, you hate affirmations because it feels like you're lying to yourself or you Mm. think vision boards are, you know, a waste of time, then try tapping because it is a modality that helps bring, it is a cognitive somatic technique, meaning it is brain and body based. When Mm. we do tapping, Oftentimes I'll ask, we ask people, where do you feel that emotion in your body? Which is something that a lot of people don't stop to think about. Where am I feeling that sadness? Where do I feel that anxiety in my body? How is that affecting my whole system and not just what I'm thinking about? And so when you take and combine the vocalizations of the EFT tapping with the tapping points, it's just this beautiful marriage of brain and body together and really a holistic modality. If you're mm-hmm. doing affirmations that you don't believe, your yeah. brain is back there, you know, kind of making a running commentary of, uh-huh. you don't believe that? Yeah, but this. Right. Yeah, are you lying? That. Exactly. <laughs> you are lying. <laughs> Trust me, I, and affirmations is actually my thing. So I... If you really don't believe what you mm-hmm. are trying to affirm, it's yeah. not going to work. It's going to flop. And, exactly. and meditation was never really like um, I've tried different versions, you know, different variations of, of, of meditation. And the one that I think works best for me is like when I mix prayer with meditation and then visualization with it. But when I when I tried to practice meditation before I would just get sleepy. I would meditate right to sleep. Yeah, agree. So this, and- the tapping, the tapping is just, I'm, I'm going to say it. It's like effectively annoying enough to make you aware. You know, it's like I'm tapping. Okay, why am I tapping? This is the reason why I'm tapping. Mm-hmm. What can I do to make myself stop tapping? Like, you know, mm-hmm. what what is the feeling? And I don't know. Of course, I'm completely new to this. But is that like the whole premise of tapping? Like, is that the whole purpose of it? I wouldn't say that the purpose is to want to stop tapping, but the premise behind it and the purpose behind it is to be able to calm the emotion down so that you are able to take the action steps forward. Those steps that you know that's the next step to take, but you're not taking it for a reason. And that reason is usually fear-based. And Mm. so when we can remove the fear from, you know, that projection of if I have, and let's pull this into communication too. If Mm. I'm afraid of how that person is going to respond to what I have to say, there's a chance I might not have that conversation that really needs to be had. And so you can visualize, okay, what is it that I am picturing is it going to happen? Is it something that they're going to say back to me? Is it mm. the facial response? Like, what is that scenario that I'm really per- perceiving myself to be in that is putting me in an uncomfortable position? And yeah. I can tap on that, even though I'm afraid of having this conversation, because 
let's just say I'm afraid he's going to break up with me. Yeah. I accept yeah. how I feel. Even though I'm afraid to have this conversation because I'm afraid of the consequences, I accept how I'm feeling right now. Even though I'm afraid of having this conversation and I feel it in the pit of my stomach because I'm afraid of the consequences, I can accept how I'm feeling and then tap through the points. I'm feeling afraid. I'm afraid of this conversation. I'm feeling afraid in my stomach, afraid in my stomach, wow. afraid in my wow. stomach and just tap through the points and it will it calms that fear either enough to like you think about things in a different way. You start to mm -hmm. see things from the other person's perspective. Um, mm. Having increased empathy, it can be an effect of tapping. Also, you are literally changing the energy that is running through your physical body. And if we are yeah. all energetic beings and connected to each other through energy, if I'm tapping on my fears of a response that somebody is going to have, and I approach that conversation now with greater confidence, greater ease, greater peace in my heart, the other person is going to be affected too, no matter, mm -hmm. no matter what, because they are going to be affected by being in my energetic bubble. How, what do you believe is the future of uh, EFT tapping? I think it is going to become more and more widely known and widely used. There are licensed mental health care practitioners that are getting certified every year. And that is extremely exciting. Um, one place that you can go to look up a practitioner who also might be a licensed healthcare provider, um, mental health care provider is on mm -hmm. EFT International. Um, so okay. that is an international organization that is really following how these courses are run and the certification process. So this is not just like a weekend course kind of thing. Okay. Um, it is it was like doing clinicals in college, you know, and submitting, okay. submitting my coursework to my mentor as I went through the process. So, you know, when I I took it as a coach, um, but also as an allied health professional and I was in the same course with mental health care providers. And you can also mm -hmm. look on in the United States, a site called Psychology Today dot com. Yeah. And they you can now click an option for cognitive somatic techniques. Now, that practitioner may or may not be certified in EFT, but if they're practicing one cognitive somatic technique, they're more likely to probably know about EFT as well. Um, okay. And that is really the trend in where treating PTSD, any kind of trauma based therapy is really headed more in the direction of how do we how do we bring the body into this too because okay. it's not just about changing the mental experience behind it it's about kind of rewiring what is going on in the body the body's response to what has happened to somebody excellent thank you for answering that question for me as we are getting closer towards the end of of our very special episode today what is the number one characteristic that you believe that every leader must have i really believe that as i've been going through the process of becoming a practitioner an eft practitioner and the trauma trainings that i've had to take it is to be thoughtful and aware that we all have our stuff. <laughs> yes. And you Ooh. don't know what somebody else has experienced this morning before yeah. they interact with you. You don't know yeah. what they are dealing with in their life on a daily basis. Most yeah. of my client work that I do. Yes, they come to me like I want to do this in my business or I want to raise my prices or all of those things, but it's all tied back. We are holistic beings. So our business is affected by our personal life and vice versa. And so we have to, we end up doing so much more work around what is going on in your personal life and how are you taking care of yourself and how can you prioritize that balance in your life and bringing it into just accepting those emotions 
being able to use the power of your voice to tell somebody, hey, I'm not doing great today, or to mm -hmm. be able to say no, because that's the best answer for you. It doesn't have to be the best answer for somebody else. But when we're our, when we are business owners, that's what part of what we stepped into was the ability to make our own decisions and to make our own choices and oh, to yes. say yes or to say no. Yeah. So it's realizing, yes, a good leader is somebody who is taking other people into consideration as whole human beings and not just what they might be able to offer or do for them. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And uh, for those of you who are listening and you're tuning in, whether on the audio or video version of the podcast, and you're like, okay, I want to know more information about this EFT tapping. Like, I want to know more, um, whether you are a medical practitioner yourself and you're interested in learning about this modality or whether you are a potential client, you're like, listen, I need to do some tapping. <laughs> I need to, I need to get my, my emotions in check and, and also uh, uh, get these cravings together. How could someone, what are the best ways for someone to connect with you? Sure. I love to connect on Instagram. So it's Instagram.com slash Sarah Whiteside 19. People mm -hmm. can pick up um, my business tailored freebie, which is Sarah Whiteside.com slash freebie. And that okay. will give you a guide on how to do EFT and prompts on different business nice. things that you can, I believe there are 20 different prompts in there on using EFT in your business. And then if you were interested on the procrastination side of things, I have a fun quiz that I developed to figure out what your procrasti style is, your procrastination <laughs> personality, and I that is it. Yeah, that is at sarahwhiteside.com slash quiz. Okay, awesome. All right. So if you are watching the um, if you're watching the video version of this podcast, then you will see um, Sarah's information up here. And I'm trying to do this really quickly to switch for you all so you can see the other as well. But uh, here is the sarahwhiteside.com forward slash quiz yes. where you can go and you can check that out as well. And of course, you can see the ticker tape uh, scrolling down at the bottom with her Instagram and her Facebook accounts. So um, I definitely want to say, Sarah, thank you so much for being with us in the Leaders Lab on today. Um, this has been very, this is actually pretty fun. Like it was very interactive for me. Most, I, I've never had anything where someone like gave me a tutorial to kind of like walk through during the episode. So I appreciate, and I know, I know those who are listening or either watching, like they started doing it too. I, I know they did. Okay. Cause these are my people. And so they were like, I like the taste of ice cream or maybe they could have, you know, said something else. So um, I thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much. It is such a pleasure. Like I said, I always love to bring EFT tapping to new audiences and just create the awareness out there about it. And to let you know that you literally have a stress busting modality at the tips wow. of your fingers. Literally at the tips of your fingers. <laughs> I like that. I see what you did there. <laughs> literally at the tips of your fingers. I love it. Well, thank you once again for joining us in the Leaders Lab. And listen, for those of you who you have gotten something out of today's episode, let me know. I would love to hear a testimonial. Um, you know, you can either leave a comment or you could, you know, subscribe to the Leaders Lab podcast, um, download today's episode, rate comment on that or comment on, on YouTube. You can also comment on the blog. Um, if you're watching from the, from drcharitytv.com, or you can also send an email to the leaders lab podcast at drcharitytv.com. Send us an email and let us know how, you know, today's episode has impacted you. So I can also share that with Sarah. I think that that would be really awesome to do. Don't forget to share our podcast, whether it's the audio or the video version or both both share so we can continue reaching millennial entre leaders all across the globe. And once again, um, as I tell you every week, you know that you can, you can connect with me everywhere on social media with the handle at Dr. Charity TV. And, um, 
this has been really a treat for me. And, and I'm so happy that you chose to listen, tune in today, whether it's Wednesday, when it's live, whether it's fresh or hot, or whether it's somewhere down the road and you're like, hmm, who is this Dr. Charity TV? What is the Leaders Lab? What is EFT tapping? We're here for all of it. So I do want to say thank you so much for tuning in today. And I will see you all next week in the lab. Thank you for listening to the Leaders Lab podcast. Visit our website at www.drcharitytv.com.